Hey fellow crafters, welcome back for another video. So today we're going to wrap up pretty much the basics of crochet. So far you have learned so much. You know how in my previous videos I've covered how to do the chain stitch, how to do the single crochet stitch, and how to double crochet. And I've shown you how to work up multiple rows. And hopefully you've also been following my blog at craftersautonomous.com. And on there I gave a pattern for a little hot pad that you can make. But there's one important thing you still don't know how to do. It's kind of like at this point you finally learn how to ride the bike. And you're going down the hill and you're getting faster and faster. And it's so much fun until you realize how do you stop? You don't know how the brakes work. So that's what I'm going to talk about today is how to finish up a crochet project. So let's take a look at these guys right here from last time. You may remember these little squares from my growing up video about how to do extra rows of double crochet stitches. And if you look at these, when you get to the end, you'll have a loop here. And of course you'll have your hook through the loop. I have these pulled big so you can see them easily. And it's a very simple method that you want to fasten this off because if you take this and you pull, you can unravel the entire project, which you probably don't want to happen after you've spent a bunch of time working on it. So I'm going to show you how to finish these off. You're probably going to want the tapestry needle at this point. You can use just a crochet hook, but a tapestry needle makes it a million times easier. So you're going to want your tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. So let's get started. So here we are. We have our finished little square in the ball of yarn. And so if I, let's say I just finished crocheting across this final row. So I'd have my hook in here like this and the yarn like this. So first I'm going to show you how to do it using crochet hooks so that way you'll appreciate just how handy this method is. But then also if you don't have a tapestry needle with you, you can go ahead and still be able to finish it. So the, actually what's cool about this hook here, this was my, this is my great grandmother's hook from when she crochets. This is a really old hook but it's still a boy brand so I guess you still use that brand that back then even. So the steps to start are going to be the same because the idea is we want to do something that will keep this from unraveling. So what we're going to do first is we're going to yarn over, pull through, and now normally you just pull through like this, basically like a chain, but this time we're going to pull this loop big, and as I pull this loop big, this side just feeds through here, but if I pull on this side, watch there, it gets tighter and smaller. So I'm going to pull it through until it's about three inches long to the end here. I'm going to take my scissors and cut the loop. Now this tail end just pull and it comes out and I'm going to snug this up and now I have a knot at the end so that way it won't unravel which is awesome but the downside of this, this is the part that most people who crochet or knit or things like this can't stand is you've got to hide these ends because no one wants to have a project with tails of yarn sticking out so the idea is we're going to We've, we don't want to cut this too short because if we just cut it short right there at the knot, the whole thing could, could, un, could unravel, which would defeat the purpose of the knot. So the idea is we want to leave a long enough tail, but we don't want it to be seen. So we're just going to stitch it under here. We're going to weave it in. So let's first show you with a crochet hook. Now, I used a size J hook to crochet this piece. But if I try to use this hook to weave it in, I'm going to get it's too big to come in through the loops. So I want to use a smaller hook. This size here is an F hook. So you want to find places that you can just kind of weave it in. There's no right or wrong way to do this. That's the nice part. So if I'm thinking through, I want to come down this and then along the bottom here. So I'm going to weave this in through there. Because wherever I put this, this is where the tail end of yarn is going to get pulled through. And let's work up through here. So you see it's a little trickier to work to get it in there. And I'm going to just kind of hook this on here and pull it through those loops there. And just kind of snug it up so you don't see it. And you see I st I've got a good bit woven in and I've still got this tail here. So I can either finish weaving in this whole entire tail or I can just cut it short there if I think I have enough woven in, which is what I'm going to do for this one. Let's take a little cut there. Before you cut, you may want to kind of tug on the fabric a little bit because depending on how tight your stitches are, the tail end may get pulled too much and then you have the tail end sticking out again and then you'll have to weave it in again, which is why tail ends are super pesky. So I'm going to weave this guy back in for a moment so you can see what it's supposed to look like. 
But the idea is just to kind of disguise that tail end somewhere in the work. And now I'll go ahead and smooth this guy out. You can see that we've hidden the tail end. And we would do the same thing with this bottom piece. Let's look at the next method. I'll move these guys out of the way and get the green square. So as I was saying, that's the method using the crochet hooks. We're going to use the method using the tapestry needle this time. So I'm going to start the same where my hook is in here. Yarn over, pull through, pull a big loop, and I'm going to tighten it. You can see, watch right there, it'll get smaller. Tighten it, cut this loop, and pull this out. Snug it up. And the length you leave the tail end isn't super important. The thing is you want to leave it long enough so that way you have something to work with so you can weave it in because if it's too short it's really hard to weave in. But you also don't want it to be super long because then you have to weave it in all in the stitches. So we're going to thread the tail end of yarn through the tapestry needle. And you might be thinking how in the world do we get it to go like that. I'm going to show you a really easy tip. So you take it and you're going to hold the hook facing this way. And you're going to come from the bottom and pinch it on there like that. And then pull this out, but keep it pinched. And then you're going to push that little fold up through the hook, uh, the eye of the needle, not the hook, sorry. And then finish pulling it through and now it's threaded on here. I'll show you that one more time. Hold on to the piece, bring this up from the bottom, Pinch it on the eye of the needle, pull the needle out and keep it pinched tight, and just work it through. And then just pull the rest of it through. And now you have it threaded on here. And the rest from this point on, it's pretty easy. You just want to weave the tapestry needle in. I like to work along the bottom. You can kind of see where I came through both times. At the bottom of the stitch, it's just I think it hides it pretty well, and it usually holds. You can go down a row, you can go up a row, you can go all kinds of directions. And I can show you some different ways, because sometimes even after you weave it in, the tail ends like to pop up. I can do another video sometime showing some different methods that'll help it um, not do that so much. And then just pull it through. And I'm gonna, that's going to be good enough, so I'm going to cut this tail end. And of course I saw this one at the beginning, I would need to do the same process with the piece at the bottom. But that's the gist of it, how I just weave the tail end in, and now there's no more of that pesky yarn. And that's all there is to it. So there you go, now you know how to get rid of those pesky tail ends of yarn. And unfortunately that's probably the worst part of crocheting, because you get all done with your project and you're like, yes, it's so beautiful, I want to use it, and then you're like, oh yeah, I've got to hide all those tail ends of yarn. But I promise it's not hard, you can definitely get the hang of this. And congratulations, because now you know all the basics of crochet and the world is yours. You can go out there and make anything you want. Keep following my blog at craftersautonomous.com and I'll keep posting more crafting ideas and I'll have a lot of crochet tutorials on there. And keep watching my channel for more great uh, crochet ideas. Until next time, bye. Crochet, crochet. Woo